Hello. I've only been live for three, well, six seconds now. So I gotta wait a minute while the whole process of going live happens around me. I hope everybody has been having a good week. I am getting slowly back into the swing of being in the store and our restock is progressing nicely. I'm going to be developing just a boatload of kits as the season wears on. You know, just because I think kits make projects more accessible and we have some kind of, okay, sorry about the routine, I'm just trying to straighten out. We have some kind of, I don't know, exciting plans to go along with those kids coming up. I'll be talking about those later on. We had our first Monday Makery. That was fun. Our next one is coming up at the, in the third and fourth Monday of June. I'll be talking about that soon. Okay, I'm just going to give it another 30 seconds for people to be notified I'm on. Hey, I see somebody's here. I can't see you. So if you would just do me a favor. I had a weird broadcast the other day where there was no sound. So if you can hear me, please say hi so that I can know that I'm being heard. Okay, we're two minutes in. I am gonna officially get started. Hi, I'm Lisa, owner of a knit sheep yarn in beautiful Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Hey there. I have a couple of things to talk about today. You know, I had an interesting conversation over on Instagram. I have been talking about the book. Let me see, I think I have one here. 52 Weeks of Socks, excuse me. 52 Weeks of Shawls, it is the newest one. There you go. It's just, it's a beautiful object in and of itself. Even if it didn't have really magnificent, magnificent patterns in it. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love the linen cover. It's a solid, solid piece. But, in the conversation I was having about it, somebody asked over on Instagram, hey, I, I got a copy of this book and I looked through it and I didn't see anything that I talked that I would consider to be TV knitting because I said, you know, it has such a variety of patterns. There's quite literally something for every knitter and even one thing for a crocheter. Um, and I said, there's even TV knitting in it. So when that person asked that question. I was like, oh, let me, and you know what? I, I'm sure other people are wondering the same thing. Are there patterns that are suitable for either TV knitting or someone who's not looking for anything like super complicated to knit? Maybe you want to take it away on vacation. So I did a little blog post where I went through the patterns in the book and I pulled out the ones that I consider it to be TV knitting. And I think the first thing I did in the blog post, I'm going to put a link to my blog post in the chat. There's going to be one in the description bar if you're, work, if you're watching this on YouTube. But I'm going to put one in the chat for right now while I'm live. There you go. That's the link. To the blog post, I really encourage you to give it a look, but I'll just recap it right quick here. So first I defined what I consider to be TV knitting. You know, for me, there need to be three things and the pattern has to have at least one of these three things for, for me to consider a TV knitting. Uh, the stitch pattern needs to be simple and easy to memorize. If there is a technique in it of one kind or another, it needs to be just one. 
I can't do uh, cable short rows and intarsia all in the same project while I'm watching TV. That's not TV knitting for me. So if there's going to be one technique or one special stitch, that's fine because I can memorize that. And if it's rhythmic, that's the last component. So let's say, I don't know, every five stitches I have to cross one cable. After a while, you just fall into that groove of knitting garter stitch, garter stitch, garter stitch, five stitches, cross a cable. Garter stitch, garter stitch, garter stitch, five stitches, cross a cable. Whatever it happens to be. So if it's quick and easy to memorize, cool. It can even happen in chunks. So let's say the pattern has several different, the design has several different pattern, stitch patterns in it. It does, is it like one stitch pattern here? You knit that for a while. And then just before you get super bored, it changes and now there's a new stitch pattern and you knit that for a while. That's okay too. Because that there's a rhythm there. And generally speaking, those stitch patterns are nothing too complicated. So for me, that is what I mean by when I say TV knitting. So I picked out, I think, six patterns in the book uh there's a shawl actually no there's a scarf there's a cowl two shawls and a wrap that i would consider to be tv knitting because they hit one or more of those criteria and just for a quick recap it's cherry twist hanky wingate granada and costa all of them will fit into those criteria and I think all those are very, very accessible patterns so that you don't have to be an expert knitter to just work your way through them very easily and they'll lead you to a really satisfying conclusion. So if you get a chance, please check out my blog post and you will get all the details on how those patterns come together. And they are in 52 weeks of shawls. And <laughs> the publishers of Lee Magazine and who are the publishers of this book, they say they don't expect you to knit one of these shawls every week. You know, <laughs> this can get you through the next, I don't know, 52 months or 52 years because there, there is literally every kind of shawl or wrap in this book. And I think I will be going through it periodically and doing a little roundup of one type of pattern so the interesting construction so that when you're in the mood for that that's there for you but i started with the tv knitting because a really interesting question came up i have a couple of finished objects today i tried to precision myself strategically so you can see them over my shoulder but it didn't really work out so we finished our pillows this is the one that mom did this is the let me hold it up Maybe if I held it back in this way. Oh, here we go. This is the Step Up Pillow. It's a Bernat pattern. And we crocheted it in uh, Universal Deluxe Chunky. It's 100% wool. comes in 100 gram skeins. And like I said, it's a chunky yarn. So the pillow actually went very quickly. It's crocheted in one piece, then folded and sewn closed at the top. It fits a 20 by 20 pillow. And so let me give you that one piece of advice that none of the patterns are gonna say. Measure your pillow. Measure your pillow. I'm gonna say it one more time. Measure your pillow. <laughs> because, because of the way this is designed, it's easy enough if your pillow, let's say your pillow was a larger pillow. Let's say it was I don't know, 24 by 24. This is easy enough because it's crocheted as, and I'm not giving away any secret sauce, it's crocheted as a big old rectangle. You could make it a little bit wider and keep crocheting it a little bit longer and boom, it would fit the new pillow. But what you don't wanna do is not measure your pillow first, crochet the pattern as written, and then dun, 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 it doesn't fit. So measure your pillow first. 
So this is a step up pillow. We worked it in Serene's and Sherbert because I thought I wanted some bright punches of color to brighten up this gray couch that we have in the shop. Look at that. It looks so nice popping off that gray. I also I also knitted one. Got something on there. This is the askew pillow. Oops, sorry. Bought my tape away. Let's see if I can hold this back somewhere. Oh, there we go. Now askew and honest to goodness, both of these patterns with this yarn, they were right on gauge with the needle size or hook size stated in the pattern. So this yarn was actually perfect for this project. It feels so good. This wool has a real smooth, even hand to it. So I did this in street, I think it's called street light yellow and concrete gray. And I just loved this, this diagonal line that was working across the board. Now, how you achieve this line is to do a series of short rows where the two colors meet. But, you know, honest to goodness, this, this was a pretty sleepy knit. It's all stockinette, except when you hit the changeover. But once you change color with that series of short rows, you're back to stockinette. And it's an envelope style pillow. So it's an envelope style pillow cover. So you can just slip the pillow inside, and there you go. And look at that one on our gray couch. Let me see if I can turn you so you can see it a little bit. Oh, there you go. That's still popping beautifully off a of gray couch. We try not to cause some seasickness. So of course, once we finish them, we created some kids. Yay! yay. This is the askew pillow kit. What you're gonna get in here is two skeins in each color. This one happens to be a ombre and cream, you know, for the neutral lovers. You get two, actually a total of four skeins, two of each color, because that's all you need for this. And your pattern is included, so you grab this and you're ready to rock and roll. The askew pillow kit is $35. And this is the step up pillow kit. Yeah, I fell in love with these grab angle containers. They just, I don't know. My literal mind was like, oh yeah, you can just grab this container and you're you're ready to rock and roll. Also, two four skeins total, two of each color. With the step up pillow it doesn't matter which color you start with really because they alternate back and forth uh, but you can decide with your askew pillow which color you're going to want on top because you're going to use more of the top color than the bottom color oh we also have some really cool news the Issue 37 of Pom Pom is coming out on June 3rd, I think it is. Yes, I think that's what it is, June 3rd. And I have a pre-order available so that if you want to come pick your issue up on June 3rd or have me mail it out to you on June 3rd, we can do that. The pre-order is up on my website, www.admitsheet.com. And I will put a direct link to it here in the chat. Hello there. How are you doing? And let me also link you. Actually, you know what? It's all on the front page of the website. So let me show you my banner. It's www.anitsheet.com. Also, we are open again. 
So our hours are Thursday through Saturday, 12 to 5. And Sundays we're open 12 to 4. So come on out and see us sometime. Anyway, I think that's all I have for today. Let me think. Yeah, that's all I have for today. Do check out my blog post. I think that it will make, I don't know, a very beautiful, I think sometimes when the pictures in the book are really beautifully done and the knitting looks complicated, we think, oh no, that's not for us. Do check out my TV knitting podcast, not podcast, blog post, because I think any of those patterns would be ideal for a less experienced knitter. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Everybody have a great day. If you weren't here live, check this out later. It'll be up on YouTube and on Facebook. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.